tell you, I'm kind of confused. I thought that we were supposed to get off of fossil fuels and switch over to electric. Now, I'm a logical thinking person and I know that electric isn't made from magic jelly bean fields. And we'll talk about solar here in a minute, but solar and wind can't produce enough power to power all the things we need. What we were supposed to do is get rid of our gas stoves and our furnaces, gas furnaces and gas water heaters and our cars and get electric cars and we're supposed to plug into the, the grid and we're supposed to use electric. Well, apparently they've changed their mind and didn't tell anybody about it. So I'm gonna get into what our neighbor's legal troubles are. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about what we do to minimize our electric. Now, first of all, we have solar panels. I would go down there and show you, but they're solar panels. Everybody's seen solar panels, at least in pictures. And that's what this would be as a picture. If you're interested in how to do a DIY solar panel system like we have done, uh, go to my channel, click on the playlist, and you'll see how we set up our solar panels. Over the last summer, we redid all our sol solar panels, made them more efficient, got another charge controller, and it's uh, made a big difference. So now we have more than enough electric. Now, what we do to minimize our electric is we only have a couple major electrical appliances. We run our freezer, we run a couple tablets, we run our well, well pump, it's a 100 foot well, and so it's a deep well pump, and it's about 800 watts. The freezer is about 120 watts. We run some tablets and phones and fans, and that's about it. Now, recently, Carolyn's son needed to stay with us, so we hooked a camper up to our solar panel system also. And I wanna show you some exciting things we just learned today about what we can do to conserve on natural resources. And so one of the things we do is we have a on-demand water heater. Now, this is a camping water heater. I'm gonna turn on the light, but it's gonna be a little flickery, so I apologize, but that's this light here is what we use. It's just a battery-operated lantern, and we can charge those during the day, and then at night, we can use them. Get back over to the water heater. You only see a little bit of it, but all the major components that you need to see are here. But this is a little camping water heater. You can use a water hose, a regular garden water hose, to run water into this tank. And when you turn on the water, you hear that click. That's propane kicking on, and it instantly heats up the water. A lot of people will say, oh, that can't heat enough water for my entire family, my big house. Well, actually it can. This thing never runs out of heat. A big tank has to heat up 50 gallons of water, 25, whatever we got. And then it sits there in that tank. Of course, it can cool off over time. And then it has to kick back on. So if you're not even home, it may be running, kicking on, kicking off. As someone is taking a shower, that hot water is going out of the tank and cold water is coming into the tank. So it's got to heat that back up. So you can run out of hot water, but you can't run out of hot water with this. You could hook this up if you know how to do some plumbing. Just remove your water heater and hook it right into this. Or you can do what we did. Put one in your shower, put one over your kitchen sink, and you got hot water. Just run a hose from your faucet. We fill our IBC tank with our well using solar panels. When the sun is up and bright, not on a cloudy day, we have an IBC tank. It's 275 gallons. I fill it like today. It's nice and sunny. I'll go ahead and fill it, need it or not, even if it's just a few gallons, I will go ahead, I'm going to shut off that light, even if it's just a few gallons, I'll go ahead and fill it, because it's a sunny day. That way, if we have a several cloudy days, it takes quite a bit of energy to 800 watts. We have 1200 watts of solar panels. So on a cloudy day, I'd rather just charge the batteries, so I got enough electric to run my freezer overnight. But on sunny days, I got more than enough electric to run the well, charge the batteries, do all kinds of extra stuff. I can almost run that well from 9 a.m. to about 2 p.m. nonstop. I would have enough electric to do that. Then shut it off and then it would have to charge the batteries. So I filled this IBC tank here. It's in this box. It's IBC tank, you wanna make sure it's food grade if you're gonna get it. So I fill that up with water and then I have an RV pump. It's a little six amp, 12 volt pump. I charge that with a little trickle charger. So I got a little lawnmower battery in the house that runs that RV pump. Then I have a little trickle charger. It's probably not the most efficient thing to do in the world, but it was a lot better than having to run a bunch of wiring all the way from my batteries, way down 150 feet up to here. So I just have a little battery here. 
and then I run a trickle charger, plug it in. And that trickle charger is enough to keep that battery charged all the time. It's never went dead. So then the RV pump runs water into that water heater. Now, another thing I was telling you about was this camp. Today, I've been setting up the camper. Tomorrow, we're going to uh, can some chicken. That's another thing you can do. If you want to get off the freezer altogether, start canning your meat. That way, you don't even have to have a refrigerator. We don't have a refrigerator. We just have a freezer. But we also can our chicken. Well, we can can all kinds of meat. A little dark in here. Also, it'll adjust the lighting. If you're canning your food, we put it in pint jars. So we have 30 pounds of chicken that we're going to can tomorrow. We're going to debone it. Again, I have another playlist. I feel like I'm advertising my channel. If you want to learn how to can, I got a playlist. Go to my channel, go to playlist, go to canning, and it shows you how I can everything. Chicken, ground beef, pork, bacon, uh, tattler lids, regular lids. Tattler lids are lids that are reusable i've talked about those a lot it's all over there at playlist so after this video you can go check that out we've been cleaning this up since her son has left we had another one of those water heaters little on-demand water heater and we had it in the camper here but we noticed that we also had to have a microwave but it stopped working i don't know why it stopped working but the water heater was broke also so both items have broke so we're kind of throwing everything out here and we're going to get it into a trash can and get it out of here so we don't have hot water in the camper now and we talked about getting another water heater we we'll probably will anyways just so we can have a backup i like having backups to things that way if one in the house ever goes out we still got a water heater but we decided not to put it in here first of all we're not going to use this i mean we live in the house a lot of people say we should live in here but this would be harder to heat it would just use more of everything. I mean, the refrigerator's bigger. We'd have to figure out how to get a freezer in. Just the installation's poor in here, and it's an old camper. So we'll just stay in the tiny house, and we'll use this to do extra things like canning or if we have a visitor. As I was setting up all the canning stuff, I wanted to wash the jars. So I was showing you these pint jars. I washed them all. And so this is kind of what I do when I can. I pre-stage the day before. Then tomorrow, I'll get it before 30. My pan's already got water in them, and I can start boiling the chicken. Once the chicken's boiled and cooked, we'll debone it, and we'll put it in jars and start canning it. Well, I needed to do dishes, but I wanted hot water. Well, I didn't want to run all the way up to the house, get hot water, run back down here, back and forth, back and forth. So we have water in here. I just ran a hose from that RV pump, so we have water. no hot water i thought well heck why not use the coffee pot now this coffee pot came with this camper and we're going to start using it we're going to start making our coffee with currently we have a percolator and the percolator we put on the propane stove and that uses propane it's it costs money no matter how you look at it, it costs money it's 12 dollars. well i just went and got propane it was 11 dollars 44 cents for a 20 pound can of it which is pretty good i get a military discount so it's pretty cheap it's normal like 15 dollars. but if i don't have to use propane why well, do it so i just filled this coffee pot up with water it's 900 watts so it's 100 watts more than the well pump and it runs for about 15 minutes so i filled it up and i poured the hot water in this tub here and it was hotter than what my hands could handle so i ended up having to put cold water in it just to cool it down so i could wash the dishes i ended up making another pot because I thought, oh, I'm going to need a second pot. It takes 15 minutes. I better go ahead and do it. But by the time I got the cold water in here, I didn't need it anymore. So I ran two pots of hot water through that. And think about it. Saved all that propane. Didn't have to run up there and turn on that water heater. I don't have to heat it on the stove or anything. Then later, Carolyn, there's another coffee pot here. Believe it or not, there's a little four-cup coffee pot. She cleaned that up, and she ran another one through that. That's 600 watts. Carolyn and I were discussing things. When it's sunny like this, we have an abundance of electricity, more than what we can use. Now, on cloudy days, we have to be cautious. So on cloudy days, we'd still use our propane methods. But when it's sunny like this, we can start heating water in the coffee pot instead of running it through the water heater. It saves money and it saves costs. Now, when we're talking about solar panels, when public utilities use solar panels and windmills, 
they cannot produce enough electricity to power everybody's homes. It's just not an effective way of doing things. And so when you get your own solar panels, most people will say it's for backup, it's for emergencies. That's because you can't run everything in your house off solar panels. Now, I know some people had these huge elaborate systems, but when you're minimalizing like we are, you don't need a huge elaborate system. When you really think about it, what do you really need to run electricity from? I can't think of anything anymore. I know I used to. Used to have this big refrigerator and TV and you know, the, the sound system. You left the lights on, you ran the air conditioner, the whole thing. We don't run an air conditioner. Now we can run an air conditioner. We can run this one off solar panels. It's 500 watts, but it's just a one room air conditioner. You have to adjust your lit lifestyle a little bit and how you live, air condition one room if you really gotta have air conditioning. But we don't have air conditioning up there. And we made it every summer now. Is it comfortable? No, it's not comfortable, but you get used to it. I notice that when you get used to air conditioning, the heat is much worse. With having 1200 watts of solar panels, we're getting to a point where we're never hardly using any gas. Don't run the generator hardly at all anymore. Yesterday we went grocery shopping. Now in the past I said that when we go grocery shopping, the freezer runs three days straight to get all that meat froze. So we run the freezer off the solar panels during the daytime, but at night, unfortunately, I gotta run the generator. So what I do is I hook the generator up to battery chargers, and the battery chargers I hook up to the battery. And so the battery chargers are actually providing the electric for the freezer, just at nighttime. What I don't need a full night's worth of electricity from the generator. So it used to be I would fill that gas tank all the way up and it would run all night long and I get up in the morning batteries are fully charged. Well then I got solar panels not doing anything all day. I just ran so last night I decided I cleaned out a old oil quart oil jug. I cleaned it out and I poured gasoline in that quart oil and I filled up the gas tank with a quart of gasoline. I started up about 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., and whenever it died, say, let's say 11, 12 o'clock at night, it died because it ran out of gas. Well, the rest of the night it ran on batteries. And when I got up this morning, I had plenty of battery left. It was, I didn't push my batteries that hard. So now the sun is up, it's recharging the batteries. So I just needed a little extra oomph to get me through that run of the freezer. Now one of these days I may get another battery, could be an option, I probably will get another battery, but a quart of gas for something that does $100 worth of battery really justify a quart of gas? Probably not. Probably would never pay for itself. The gas is probably cheaper. But these are the things you look at, how to minimize your life. As it is, our neighbors from across the pond are doing something crazy over there in Great Britain. They are looking at legislation right now that you have to reduce your electric bill to some certain amount or you face prison time. Now I'm not one of these big conspiracy theories that it's coming to America, you just wait and see, I'll tell you, huh? This is why it's so confusing to me. Why are they throwing you in prison if you're not reducing electric when they wanted you to go get electric cars? That's gonna use electric. So I guess what they're wanting you to do is just get rid of everything and live minimalistically. Well, you got to think about that. The people who are voting for these representatives, I guess, want this. I know people are saying, I don't want this. I don't want to be forced to drive an electric car. But we keep voting for the same politicians that make us do these things. I would suggest start minimizing the amount of electric you use. Don't use that big water heater. Shut it off. Get rid of it. it it's a really inefficient way to heat water and it doesn't even give you all the hot water you need. Air conditioning, air conditioning one room. If you have to have air conditioning, there's no reason to air condition your whole house. Well, it gets hot in the bathroom. Well, you're only in there a little while. Then go into the air conditioning. You can even sleep in the air conditioned room. Although it gets pretty cool here, I don't need air conditioning at night at all. Because no matter how much we fight this, it's coming. It's been coming for years. We've known about this green movement since the 90s. I remember the first time somebody asked me about it. I said, what are you gonna do with uh, the change in the climate? And I said, well, I'll survive it. 
and I am surviving it. It's, it. If it is here, I'm not worried about it at all. And I am not at risk of anybody bothering me that I'm using too much electric. They can't turn off my electric at the meter. They can't regulate my thermostat. They can't do any of that. I use firewood for heat. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about the wood stove. So hope I can inspire you to minimize your life. So you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.